Hey, wake up! New Ubuntu dropped! This hunk of white plastic is an early 2009 Mac Mini. Apple stopped supporting this thing way back in 2015. It's so old, it still shares its case design with the last PowerPC Mac Mini G4. But I don't think they're worthless at all. So when Ubuntu released their new version 2404 LTS a few days ago, I realized that the minimum system requirements are exactly the specs of this old Mac Mini. So can a dirt cheap polycarbonate Mac Mini that's old enough to drive here in Pennsylvania provide any sort of reasonable experience as a modern, minimal Ubuntu machine? Well, there is only one way to find out, so stay tuned! And if you enjoy dragging old computers kicking and screaming into the modern age, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. So Apple built this style of Mac Mini through 2009. In 2010, they switched over to the familiar all aluminum chassis. Aluminium. But I really have a soft spot for these. Now my particular Mac Mini here isn't the fastest version of this that Apple released. These went up to Core 2 Duo 2.66 gigahertz, but my two gigahertz one here is still the fastest architecture that they ever released. And I just think it's hilarious that this meets the exact minimum requirements for the latest version of Ubuntu. On the back here, we have some very nice ports. It has mini DisplayPort and mini DVI connected to the GeForce 9400M graphics, a whopping five USB 2.0 ports and gigabit ethernet. This also has Airport Extreme and Bluetooth 2.1, really not too shabby. Actually, before I boot the Ubuntu installer, I'm kind of curious what's already on here because this might be the Mac Mini that I was using a long time ago as a Minecraft server. Uh, disturbingly, it says Windows, but I'm sure that's not actually true. Hey, it is Debian. So yeah, now that we know this is no stranger to Linux, let's try to install the latest version of Ubuntu. Right after this quick word about today's very comfortable sponsor, Autoful. Friends, you would not believe the struggles I've had trying to find a good chair for my editing space slash retro gaming nook. That is, until I got my Autoful M6 gaming chair because holy crap, not only is it incredibly comfortable, but it's also the most technologically advanced chair I've ever owned. You see, this thing is both heated and ventilated, which is wild. The Autoful M6 has dual element heating baked into the cushion with three levels of adjustable heat. It also has dual fan ventilation. I didn't even know you could do that in a chair. There's no air conditioning down here in the basement layer, so on the rare day it's too hot. I finally have a way to keep cool. It's also very comfortable with a following style elastic waist support that adapts to different postures with a pressure release system. The seat itself is crafted with extremely comfortable ultra soft porous leather. Not only does it feel great, but it's durable too. And these adjustable 6D robotic style armrests, they don't just go up and down, but are adjustable in six different ways. They even tilt up. The Autoful M6 has a 160 60 degree recline, and this one even has a retractable footrest. So if you're looking for a really excellent gaming chair, check out the Autoful M6, link down in my description below. So really, I'm not worried that this Penryn Core 2 Duo won't be able to boot the latest Ubuntu. I'm more concerned with whether we're gonna have anything even remotely resembling a usable experience. I mean, sure, this hits all of the bare minimum requirements to run the latest version of Ubuntu, but Ubuntu is pretty big these days and, dare I say, bloated. At the same time, Ubuntu now defaults to a minimal install with a minimal set of stuff, and boy howdy is this taking a long time to boot this live USB. All right, well, that took a slightly uncomfortable amount of time, but here we are in the installer slash the live environment. Oh, this is actually 
much nicer than I expected. See how smooth it is. And honestly, kind of surprisingly smooth. Look at that. All right, we'll go through this very lovely looking new installer. I love these little illustrations they have. Doesn't see the Wi-Fi, so I will connect an ethernet cable. All right, install completed with no drama to speak of. Let's see if she boots. And the mouse has a bit of lag here. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah, the mouse is quite laggy, which is weird. It was not laggy at all in the live boot from the USB stick, so I don't know why it would be laggy now. Through the magic of trial and error, I have discovered a quirk. Because look, now this is moving just fine. In fact, I would say it is silky smooth and yeah, it turns out that Ubuntu just doesn't like some of these USB ports. If I have the mouse and keyboard connected to the first, fourth, or fifth of these USB 2.0 ports, everything lags horribly. And when I plug it into USB port two or USB port three, then everything is silky smooth. And I was watching system logs and uh, D message here to try to see if I could figure out what was going wrong. And really there's no clues here that I'm able to understand. When I plug it into any of the ports, it's pretty much the same information except the USB number is different. The only guess I have is that there's some sort of USB hub going on inside the Mac mini that Ubuntu doesn't like, but for now, well, we're working just fine. And here is our obligatory NeoFetch screenshot showing that we are indeed running kernel 6.8 on our Mac Mini 3 comma 1. We have our GeForce 9400, although we're using the Nouveau driver. I don't think the NVIDIA proprietary driver for this card is still in the Ubuntu repositories. But with that said, this is running smooth as silk. I mean, Look at that. And if we do a quick echo XDG session type, we see we are indeed running Wayland. So this is all cutting edge modern tech here. But of course, I'm as curious as I'm sure you are. What can you actually do with this thing? Of course, we're going to install Steam because this is going to be our gaming 16 year old Mac mini on Linux. While that installs, we'll pop open a quick Firefox and might as well download Minecraft. Let's see how YouTube playback works on Firefox here. We are at 100% on both CPU cores trying to play this ad here, so that's a good sign. Playing back HD video seems to work just fine. Don't really notice any slowdown. The fan on the Mac mini is really going though. Seems I'm able to join a Twitch stream just fine too. Yeah, I can chat and everything just fine. All right, let's uh, install some Steam games. Okay, I've installed a mix of games, some that I think will work well, some that I think should work, and then some that I would be very surprised if they were even close to playable. We'll start with the one I think will work just fine, Vampire Survivors, a 2D game that has a native Linux client. Oh yeah, this works just fine. I love this game. <laughs> Uh oh, oh there are some glitches. Oh, we've got some graphical glitches. All right, let's try something a little more taxing. This is The Long Dark, one of my favorite all-time games, just survival crafting. Uh, the game is being a little bit glitchy. That is perhaps down to the Nouveau driver and the extremely old graphics card in this machine. You know, throwing Steam games at this machine is kind of unfair. I mean, technically, this Mac Mini should only just be able to run this operating system and normal applications. So why don't we, instead of Steam, try to run some of my favorite old school open source games like Sour Broughton, which is an excellent old school open source 3D first-person shooter 
and it has some of the best music in any video game ever. All right, installed just fine. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, silky smooth. And we at least have to see how the latest version of Minecraft runs. This is gonna run 1.20.6. Uh, well, to call this a frame rate would be putting it a little too optimistically. <laughs> All right, well, went back a few versions to 116 and well, frame rate's still not great, but at least it's playable. Looking at sold listings on eBay, I see some of these things selling for like $30 or so. I mean, that's a heck of a lot of fun for $30 with a totally usable and interesting looking piece of Apple history that apparently can run the latest Ubuntu just fine. I mean, there are some caveats and some little quirks we encountered, but as far as light web browsing and watching videos, consuming media, and even very light gaming, this is a pretty capable little machine. And I think we have to give kudos to Ubuntu here for posting minimum requirements and actually supporting them with a smooth and responsive experience, even on extremely old hardware. But that'll do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more stuff like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Andrew Nicholson, April White, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Drew Hamlin, Frodo Jedi, Gaspar Heller, George Rosansky, Graham, Greg from Hrut K Mods, James Fryman, James Laurie, Jason Papaz, Jason Ezel, Camille Rokowski, Lyle Truid, Matthew Crowall, Nick Daniels, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Cedarbaum, Scott Thompson, Tom Woodfin, Unknown Soldier 41, Veronica Explains, and Xantronics and Industrial, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.